it has here the call to worship written from Psalm 67, verse 1 to verse 3. God be merciful unto us and bless us, and cause his face to shine upon us, Selah. That thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the hell, let all the people praise thee. Yes, uh, all rise now to uh, sing our opening hymn for the Lord. We gather together. Thou come unto me. 
I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will say no wicked things before my eyes. I hate the work of them, but I turn aside. It shall not creep to me. A forward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. Whoso privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off, him that hath a high look and a proud heart, they will not I suffer. My eyes shall be upon the faithful of the man, and they may dwell with me. He that walketh in the perfect way he shall serve me. He that walketh deceased shall not dwell within my house, he that tells lies shall not carry in my sight. I will early destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all wicked words from the city of the land. Thank the Lord for his uh, precious and holy word. And once again, we welcome all of you and thank the Lord for your faithfulness in uh, coming to worship Him. Okay, now let us uh, hear the scripture reading written from Psalm 139, verse 1 to verse 10. Psalm 1, verse 9, verse 1. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou comfortest my heart and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it all together. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thy hand for me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto it. Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. We thank the Lord for you for this purchase and holy work. Now we are in the customary for the customary. Let's all rise for. Almighty God, our gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this blessed day, this time of worship. As the prophet Jeremiah says, we are not consumed, it's because of your mercies and your compassions fail not. Truly, your faithfulness to all of us is great. We want to acknowledge that uh, thou art the true and living God. We want to thank you for saving us from the bondage of sin. We are so thankful that we know you and we can call you Abba Father. We want to thank you for life. We want to thank you for health to many of us. You have blessed us with uh, good health. We want to thank you for the many opportunities you have given us even in the church to serve you and also in the society Lord. We want to thank you for all the help, we want to thank you for friends, we want to thank you for our family members, we want to thank you for your church. We, we are so thankful that in and through all these people 
you have been ministering to us and uh, you have been uh, encouraging us, O oh Father. Even this evening, we want to call to remembrance the 16th century Reformation. At that point of time, the church was in darkness. There were a lot of uh, wrong teaching, uh, superstition. Your word was not honored. And uh, Lord Jesus, you were not given the preeminence in the church. But we are so thankful for raising the reformers like Martin Luther, John Calvin, and uh, many others, Lord. We want to thank you for their courage. We want to thank you that uh, they were instrumental, Lord, to deliver the church from the wrong path, Lord. And uh, we are back to the Bible and we are so thankful for that. Lord God, we pray that we will appreciate all these things. Even in our Christian life, we will continue to honor the Bible. We will continue to give preeminence to the O Father. We want to uh, thank you for the uh, COVID situation in Singapore. Things are more or less under control. Uh, we want to thank, for, thank you for uh, all the uh, health officials, the uh, decisions taken by the government authorities, and also, by and large, people have been cooperating a lot. Uh, we want to thank you for that. And we are also thankful that uh, as a church we can gather in your house to worship you. Lord, we pray that you will cleanse us of all our sins and uh, unrighteousness. We pray that you will fill us with your spirit and love. We want to thank you for our members and our friends who are not with us for some reasons. We pray that in the coming weeks you will encourage them and you will bring them to your house to worship you. We also want to Remember all those who are not well, all those who are going through a lot of uh, trials and difficulties and uh, testings in their life. We pray that you will be very gracious to them. And even in this uh, difficult time, we pray that they will look up to you for guidance, for help, and also for strength. We want to thank you for your precious word. We pray that even this evening, Lord, you will minister to us. We pray that your word will comfort us. We pray that your word will convict us. We pray that your precious word will encourage us so that whatever befalls us, we will move on in our lives to live for you and also to serve you. We thank you for your everlasting love. We pray that you will be with us and Lord God, we pray that you will bless us. We ask and pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As I pray, we thank God that as a church we can gather in his house to worship you. Uh, in some countries like Sri Lanka, things were better. Uh, they gathered in the church to worship now because there are more cases, especially in the capital. So there is a lockdown again and they are not able to gather in the church to worship. So they are back in their homes. They are receiving the uh, messages through WhatsApp and Zoom. So, but we thank God that although we are uh, we are not able to uh, open our hearts, open our mouths to sing, but at least we are able to gather as a church and we are able to worship God. So let us uh, thank God 
uh, for whatever God is doing in our lives. And uh, let us not take things for granted. Uh, this evening we are going to look at Psalm 139. Uh, the, the message is, uh, is, is entitled, Here, There, Everywhere. Some people, we all know that some people never think about God. And without God, they are godless, they are Christless, they are helpless, and they are hopeless. Uh, without knowing God, they live and die as strangers in this world. Some others have uh, wrong thoughts about God. And uh, they live and die in the shadow of superstition and confusion. And still others, they have uh, right thoughts about God, but somehow it makes no difference in their lives. And uh, they also live and die disappointed and uh, defeated. As we look at Psalm 139 this uh, evening, uh, we all know that Psalm 139 was uh, written by a man who had right thoughts about God, which is none other than King David. He had right thoughts about God and that made the difference in his life. And uh, he lived with confidence. He lived with uh, security and uh, he also lived with fulfillment. So we thank God by uh, God's grace that we have uh, right thoughts about God and like David we also can live our lives confidently uh, we can have security in our lives and we can also live fulfilling lives and uh, as we look at uh, this psalm and David he submitted to God so this evening I just want to we just want to look at uh, three discoveries David made as he thought about God and the difference God made in his life. Uh, the first six verses, God knows everything. And uh, secondly, we are going to look at verses 7 to 12. God is everywhere. And thirdly and finally, we are going to look at how God can guide our lives. Verses 19 to 24. Uh, kindly turn with me to uh, Psalm 139. God knows everything. The psalmist says in the first two verses, we, we heard that, that being read earlier, O Lord, you have searched me thoroughly and have known me. You know my down-sitting and my uprising. You understand my thought afar off. God knows everything. In 1 Samuel 16 and verse 7, uh, we read, For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward. We only can look at outward things. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. 
only can only god can look at the heart of man luke 19 uh, we can see that jesus was uh, walking in the streets of uh, jericho and there was a man by the name of zacchaeus he heard about jesus and we all know that uh, he climbed onto a sycamore tree and the bible says see when, when we walk we will we won't look upwards we will look forward but the bible says when jesus came uh, to that place uh, towards the tree jesus looked up and saw him jesus saw zacchaeus no one i think nobody told jesus that zacchaeus was up on the tree and the bible says jesus looked up and saw him and said unto him zacchaeus make haste and come down so we thank god that uh, our god knows everything uh, theologians call this god's omniscience uh, simply meaning that god knows everything uh, he knows us personally he knows us personally uh, sometimes in our casual talk with people uh, some, sometimes they, they will ask us do you know this 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 particular person uh, we will say yes yes uh, yes i i know him but we, we many a times we, we we do not know much about them maybe we know that uh, we, maybe we know his name uh, maybe we we know that he is married and uh, maybe he has three children uh, maybe he stays in bukit batok that's all uh, there are the details we know but god knows everything he he knows us personally so in this first six verses we can see 13 personal pronouns he knows our name god knows our nature he knows our needs and the bible says that he even know the number of hairs on our head he knows us intimately including our actions and our thoughts he knows us sovereignly i just want to point uh, two things uh, from this uh, six verses as we understand that uh, god knows everything uh, first is the encouragement the encouragement is to all of us that god knows our plans he knows our ways he knows our dreams he knows our aspirations and the bible says that even before we ask even before we utter our prayer he knows our needs and not only he knows our he knows our needs but he is also more than capable to meet our needs and uh, i think that is a great encouragement to all of us we we, we don't have to worry too much about the future and uh, we we should not be very stressful with this covid-19 of course we have to we have, we have been readjusting our lives many things we 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 are, we are yearning to do but we are not able to do it but but it is okay but it is okay god knows uh, uh sometimes we may think that things are out of control but nothing is out of control from god's hand uh only god god knows the reasons so by his permissive will god has allowed this uh, pandemic and we we cannot question god and our hope is in god so he knows everything so we have to completely like david we have to surrender our lives to god and there's not there is not only there, there is uh, not only an encouragement but i think there is also a warning to all of us god knows all of our actions he knows all of our thoughts he knows uh, what we do what we think and all that you know sometimes we can be unfaithful married people they can be unfaithful to their spouses 
they can lie and uh, cheat their spouses. God knows. God knows we cannot run, run away from, from it. Uh, we, we cannot, uh, we, we cannot uh, fool God. And sometimes there are evil intentions in us, evil plans in us. God also knows that and we are accountable for all that. And uh, sometimes we are dishonor, dishonest and uh, there is mismanagement, there is scheming sometimes in the workplace. We try to gang up and we try to pull people down and sometimes we falsely accuse people. That can happen in the church. That can happen in the workplace. But the thing is, we, we cannot fool God. Many times we, we, we may think that nobody knows. Nobody knows. Uh, but we must always remember that God knows everything. And in, even in the Bible college, even in the Bible college, people are in the Bible college to be, they are, they are there to be trained and they want to become servants of God. And uh, students have been caught in the Bible college uh, for, for cheating. When I was in Sri Lanka, my first week, I, was, I still remember I was teaching the book of uh, Galatians. And one young student, he was only 21 years old, and uh, he was caught, you know, copying. Uh, so I just, uh, the first time, because I was going to fight. My, my first experience in Sri Lanka and uh, my first course in that particular Bible college so I called him and uh, very firmly told him I will just warn him but the next time if you are caught I have to bring this, uh, this, this matter to the uh, principal so we are accountable we are accountable to what we do and we also see that in the life of uh, in Acts chapter 5 in the life of uh, Ananias and Sapphira, they, they sold a piece of land and they were trying to, trying to, trying to lie. Did you sell this for this amount? They, 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 they wanted fame. And, uh, you know, the, the, the consequences were so very serious. Both of them died. Ananias and uh, followed by the wife, uh, Sapphira. Both of them died. So we thank God it is an encouragement. And uh, there is also a warning for us. We cannot fool around God. He knows everything. And God will hold us accountable for that. You know? So when God, God needs to act, He will act. Okay? So we have to be careful. We have to be careful. So there is a encouragement and there is also a warning to all of us. Secondly, God <coughs> is everywhere. We can see that from verses 7 to 12. Uh, let me just read <clears throat> verses 7 to 10. Psalm 139 verses 7 to 10. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the, of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. So here in this verses 7 to 12, we see that uh, God is everywhere. We cannot control God and uh, put God in a, in, in a particular place and, you know, you, you be there, you know. Uh, in, in Singapore, you, you go to many, uh, many Hindu homes. Of course, we all know that the HDB uh, block, whether it is a two-room flat or three-room flat or five-room flat, whatever, there is a storeroom. There is a storeroom. So most of the Hindu homes, they will turn the storeroom into a prayer room, prayer altar. Okay, all their idols uh, will be there. But our God, we cannot control God. God 
is everywhere. God is everywhere. God is here. God is there. And God is everywhere. God is with us. God is in our homes. God is in our, in the, in our workplace. In our travels. In our pain. In our suffering. In the darkest night. In the brightest day. God is always with us. We cannot flee from Him. And this is a beautiful description of God's omnipresence. God is everywhere. God is everywhere. The psalmist say, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? The answer is nowhere. Because God is everywhere. That was David's experience as we look at this psalm. When he, when, when he was a shepherd boy, when he was enthroned as the king, when he was in the battlefield, when he was hiding in the cave, when he had to flee from uh, flee for his life from uh, King Saul, God was always with him. God was always with him. And even as we look at the life of uh, Joseph, when he was in Egypt, in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 39, when Joseph was in Potiphar's home, when he was working, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 39, verse 2 and 3, we, we read, And the Lord was with Joseph. And uh, verse 3, And his master saw that the Lord was with Joseph. And after that, we know that uh, Joseph was falsely accused by Potiphar's wife and he was in prison. And the Bible says, while Joseph was in prison, Genesis 31 and verse 21, the Bible says, but the Lord was with Joseph. And in verse 23, the Bible says, because the Lord was with Joseph, the, the, the Lord was with Joseph. So we, we, we see that God's uh, presence, not only God's presence, uh, God's peace and God's power was upon David and also with uh, Joseph uh, when he was uh, in Egypt. And uh, we thank God that uh, our Lord Jesus Christ is our Emmanuel, Matthew chapter 1. And we all know that uh, the, the word Emmanuel means God with us. And the blessed Holy Spirit, He is not only in us, He is with us and uh, He is for us. So God promises to never leave us nor forsake us when we go through dark days. And we thank God for that. We must always remember that God is with us and He knows our problems and needs. We can take refuge in Him and uh, He will see us through. So we should not be discouraged in our lives. Life is not a bed of roses. We all know that uh, you know, we have to go through uh, tests and uh, challenges, obstacles. But let us thank God that uh, God is with us. God is, God is everywhere. And thirdly, <coughs> finally, God can guide our lives. God guided King David in his life. Verses 23 and 24. Let me read that verses. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me. And David says, and lead me in the way everlasting. The most important knowledge in the world is the knowledge of God, knowing God. We must know God. The great theologian John Calvin, in his uh, institutes, he has, he has written at length, he has written much about 
knowing God. So we must we must know God. Proverbs chapter one and verse verse seven says, "The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction." The second most important is the knowledge of ourselves. We must know ourselves. And uh, John Calvin has also written much about knowing, knowing our, our, ourselves in his uh, institute. So, when we know God, we will realize his sufficiency. When we grow in the grace and in the knowledge of God, we will realize God's sufficiency. When we know us, when we understand ourselves, we will realize our inadequacy. Knowing God, we will come to an understanding that He is sufficient, and knowing ourselves, we will realize our in in inadequacy. And that will lead us and help us to be dependent on God. We will put our trust. You know, sometimes in our Christian, Christian life, our lives are not Bible-centered. Our lives are not God-centered. We are not led by the Holy Spirit. We, we are Christians. We are Christians. Yes, we say we, we, we love God. But sometimes we try to live our lives with our own strength. We, we know a lot of things. We know how to plan. Whatever assignment is given to us in our workplace, we are able to, without praying, without praying, without uttering a prayer, we are able to, able to do our work and all that. So, so sometimes when we are not careful, we become very independent. And we are not dependent on God. Uh, but as we look at David's life, uh, he was uh, very much dependent on God. So we cannot flee from God or fight Him, but we must uh, follow Him. We have, we have no other choice. And when we are willing to obey, God is more than willing to reveal His way to us. Uh, we may we may be experience, experiencing that in our life. So he guides us through his word and um, through prayer. And we should not be stingy with God, giving him only a few minutes to pray. He also guide, guides us to, through the prompting of the Holy Spirit, through circumstances and uh, through his people. And uh, we, we, we thank God that uh, God is able to guide our lives. In Ezra chapter 7 and verse 9, we read, On the first day of the first month, that's Ezra, he started from Babylon, and on the first day of the fifth month, he arrived in Jerusalem, for upon him was the good hand of his Lord. Ezra was led and directed by God all the way from Babylon to Jerusalem. And even the Israelites, we, we, we also can see this truth in their lives, how God led them in the wilderness. And David also says in the very famous Psalm, Psalm 23, verses 2 and 3, He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth, he says, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. We, we, uh, we thank God 
that uh, uh, God knows everything. We thank God that uh, God is uh, everywhere and we thank God that God also is more than capable of guiding our lives. I just want to uh, end this uh, uh, message uh, by uh, mentioning a few things about Fanny Crosby. We all know uh, uh, about F Fanny Crosby and uh, many times we have uh, sung this song in our, in our evening service all the way my Savior leads me. It's very encouraging as we look at the words, very encouraging and very comforting, uh, comforting him. All the way my Savior leads me, what am I to ask beside? Can I doubt his tender mercy who through life has been my guide? And uh, the last stanza, uh, it says, This is my song through endless ages. Jesus led me all the way. Fanny Crosby, when she was uh, six weeks old, the eye surgeon, uh, he hurt and uh, gave her the wrong medicine and she was blinded for life. And uh, she lived for 95 years, of course she got married, she lived for 95 years. And the background of this uh, theme is, one day in 1874, Fanny Crosby was in particular need of five dollars. Not having any idea where she would obtain the money, she prayed earnestly that the Lord would help that the Lord would help her. Almost within minutes, an admirer uh, called her at her home for a visit. And uh, as she left, the admirer, he shook her hands living in the hand a five dollar bill he said i cannot account for bringing you this money except to believe that the lord sent me here later miss crosby said fanny crosby said my first thought was that in a wonderful way the lord accepts and supplied my needs so humble was i by his goodness that thoughts of praise began to turn through my mind and soon the words to this hymn were clear to me. That was the background. Maybe all, all through, through her life for the 95 years, uh, God was with her uh, and God led her all the way. So we thank God. We have a great God who knows everything about us. He is our Emmanuel. He is with us. And uh, we don't have to fear. We don't have to fear. We just have to trust God and commit our lives to God. Whatever befalls in our lives, we just pray and commit everything to God. Everything to God in prayer. May God <coughs> help us. Let us prepare our hearts for the holy communion. <clears throat> Let me just read a few verses from the First Corinthians eleven. For oh, I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, please do in remembrance of me. After the same man also, he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, this cup is the new testament in my blood. This do ye as of as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Let us all rise and commit our lives to God. Let us search our hearts. Let us pray and partake in these holy elements. We thank God. God truly loves us with an everlasting love. 
let us pray. Almighty God, our gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this day. Lord, we thank you that you are our Ebenezer, you are our Jehovah Jireh. We thank you for your sacrificial death for us on the cross at Calvary. Father, we pray that you'll be gracious to us. You know everything about us, Lord. We cannot fool you. You know our struggles with sin. And Lord, we pray that you'll help us. Even as we seek your forgiveness, Lord, we plead with you. Lord, we pray that you'll have mercy upon us. Lord, we pray that you'll be gracious to us. Lord, we pray even as we confess our sins, even now, and even in our lives, in our personal prayers, we pray that you'll forgive us. We thank you for loving us. Be with us. We ask and pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ, as he was with his disciples, he took bread, break it, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and he said, Eat this which was broken for you. Let us are taking that way. In the same manner, he also took the cup he gave thanks and he told them, drink ye all of it. Let us pray, let us pray for ourselves. We thank God. God is not only really just, but he is also faithful to cleanse us of our sins and unrighteousness. Father, once again we want to thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for being with us. For the thank you for the everlasting love as you have loved us. Lord, we also pray that you help us to love you. We commit our lives to you. Be with us and bless us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us remain standing for the closing hymn. <coughs>
let's uh, give thanks for the offering and also receive the benediction. Let me Heavenly Father, we <coughs> want to thank you once again for this blessed day. Even as we present our tithes and our offerings, we pray that you will accept it. We pray that you continue to provide our needs and we also pray that uh, you will continue to give willingly. You know. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior, the glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and evermore. Amen.